Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Daily Ash Show interview series, and today we're going to be talking to Rebecca Love. And I'm super excited about this. Welcome, Rebecca. We've also got Beth with us hanging out as well. Hey. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about this, Rebecca, because uh, we know each other. I, I want to make sure we, we put that out of the top. It's not like we're uh, perfect strangers here. We've we've known each other now for uh, over a year, believe it or not. I mean, we saw each other in Orlando not about a year ago at this point. Um, <laughs> So we've known each other for a while, but I was super excited when you said, yes, you come on to this show. Um, and I want to sort of kind of kick things off by just giving people just a taste. And man, we would spend the whole 30 minutes if we really dug into everything you've accomplished to this point. Um, but you've done everything from co-authored books to being the first nurse that was on TED.com, to being the first nurse uh, on a panel at South by Southwest, to um, starting a nurse and scientific and innovator and leadership called Sunsail. Am I saying that right? Sunsail, Brian, you got it. Sunsail, because you told me once before. Um, and uh, being a chief nursing officer, which is where we met each other, and now kind of breaking out and um, doing your own thing with a company called Nurse Approved, which we'll definitely get to. But what I would love for you to do, uh, Rebecca, is we're just kind of getting into this is get, I love your story about how you got into nurses and maybe a little bit about your mom. And so if you could just share that really quick with, um, you know, our listeners, just to kind of get a feel of how you got to where you are. And then let's definitely dive in into all the fun AI stuff. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm i sure you guys all have interesting stories how you ended up where you are, right? But for me, I thought I was on my way to law school. I graduated. Um, I was working on a presidential campaign. Healthcare was a really big issue. And, uh, you know, it was my mom who flew out and said to me, you know, we're not going to support you going into law school. We think you should become a nurse. And I'm not sure about anybody else um, who said, oh, I'm going to be a lawyer and wait, you want me to be <laughs> a nurse? Like, I, I see them very different professionally. Um, I, with Beth, I'm sure we've been there, Brian, we've been there. And what ended up happening from that conversation is I agreed to apply to one nursing school while I was applying to all these law schools. And I had an interview and they said, sorry, two-year waiting list. And I was like, I'm going up to law school, I guess. And the next thing I know, uh, two weeks later, I get an acceptance letter. And for me, I'm a really big believer in science from the universe. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be a nurse. And at that time, in all honesty, the presidential debates that were going on were a lot around healthcare. And what I realized, there was all these lawyers and others sitting in the rooms making up policy around healthcare but there wasn't nurses. And I kept thinking to myself, how do you preach to the choir if you have nobody mm. that's a member of the choir making these decisions? So that's sort of how I got into nursing and the rest is history, but it has definitely been an interesting ride. De definitely. Uh, you you have a very interesting, like I said, we, we can only barely touch the surface. What I will say to anybody, and I mean, everybody should do this that's listening to this, is go check out Rebecca on uh, LinkedIn. Not only because you're a fantastic writer and you put a lot of content out, um, but you could also learn a lot from, you have, you have it up on the screen for anybody watching. Uh, go check out Rebecca on LinkedIn. Um, it's Rebecca Love. It's an easy name to, to remember. Um, and uh, go find out all the cool things that you've been working on. So, all right. So this is a show, obviously, what we do at the Daily I Show is on, during the day, five days a week, we get on and we talk about all sorts of different um, AI topics. And we don't really ever try to come across, right, Beth, is like being the experts. It's more like seven people of various backgrounds just having a conversation about the world we currently live in and how kind of crazy it is and all the new AI advancements that seem to be rolling out every 48 hours at this point because it's just so fast. And everybody has this sort of feeling, or I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people have this feeling of I'm falling behind, I'm falling behind. And truthfully, that's not the case. There's the there's the people like me and Beth and others on our show that just really love talking about it. But it's not really the case. But at the same time, what I would love to talk to you about is specifically nurses and, and healthcare in general and how we can make sure that nurses have the AI literacy, if you will, the the tools in their in their tool bag through things like we'll talk about nurse approved and other, you know, cool, inventive, innovative AI ideas that come from nurses. But, you know, some of the low hanging fruit there, Rebecca, that people will talk about is like transcripting. Now, transcripting has been around for a while. We, we could think way back to, you know, doctors and nurses sort of talking into it and tra somebody transcribing for them later. And now we have all these really kind of cool AI tools that will almost transcribe in the moment. Beth and I were just dealing with a tool not too long ago that's at this point almost doing live transcription and um, and uh, what should we call it, translation from other languages. 
And I know for my wife, who you know, my wife is a dietitian, and when she would go in the rooms, it'd be a language barrier. And so, of course, any of the, any of the above, all of the above, these can be really helpful. But from your expertise, Rebecca, in nursing, you know, when you think back to your days of being that bedside nurse when you first came out of school, and um, you were doing like note taking and having to keep good records and stuff like that, how much would you say that was like a big part? Like, how much of your job, I guess, or the day the task was that? So I'm dating myself, but when I got out of school, we were still on paper charting. And I wouldn't think that that was actually a cumbersome or burdensome process. Paper charting was actually relatively simple. You basically charted your notes at the end of the shift and you were you were done with your shift. I think the burden really came on with the introduction of electronic health records. Mm. Now, this is well documented um, because what happened is, is that basically electronic health records were not really done for documentation purposes. They were developed so that hospitals could better bill payers for the services that were done. So suddenly you went from an eight by 12 piece of paper of writing a nurse's note to suddenly, I don't know, 15, 16 pages of clicks and boxes that you had to mm -hmm. do um, that suddenly I would say took yeah, I would, I would, I, and I think this is terrible to say, but I think in some of the really bad situations right now, if you're having six patients, I mean, you, you would be, you're going to be standing in front of a computer charting half of every hour uh, to, wow. to do those things. And that is not what we did um, when there was paper charting. And so um, I, I, I think that to your point, like all the research is around physicians on EHRs and how totally devastating that is for physicians. But if you're looking yeah. at nurses, I mean, the person who is providing the care to the patient suddenly is spending half of their time in front of a computer screen uh, charting and not doing what those tasks are to actually deliver care. And that has been incredibly disruptive, incredibly. Right. And I would and imagine no one, too, Go ahead, no Beth. one Go gets ahead. into nursing to stand in front of a computer like that's Sorry. there are other jobs that you could do to do that yeah. you got it 100 percent. i mean i yeah that is definitely not why we got in right so if we had wanted a, a desk job behind a computer most of us would have taken that and i think that is exactly the burden that nurses are feeling like what has happened to this profession of caring when you're standing constantly now between a, uh you know a machine and the human yeah, I mean, there was a stat that came out that said um, it was a recent study, uh, the American Academy of Family Physicians Innovation Lab, mouthful, but that's what it was, which found that using AI assistant um, for transcribing and things like that reduced documentation time by 72%. That's a, that's a sizable percentage when you talk about that. And it's interesting that you talk about how it didn't really necessarily help the the problem going from paper to click. I had a similar story when I was a firefighter. We started with paper and then our PCRs, our patient care reports, went to the the old good old Panasonic Tough Book, and they lived up to the name. You could drop them off a thirty story building, the damn things would still work. Um, but you know, it was point and click. And now the reason was it was for standardization, right? Because every person has a different way of saying it. But if you can just click from a box, well, then that's good for the data side of it. But it didn't necessarily solve for the time investment it takes to do it. And now right. what I think we're seeing, and I'd love to get your opinion on it, is we're starting to see this, this merge now of AI being this co-pilot of you, this assistant that says it comes over the top. It's not there to replace a nurse, but it's there to say, hey, I can not only help you speed up this, uh, this time intensive transcription and documentation, but also now all that data can get into like national and, and global databases in order to give really good answers back. And we're starting to see situations where nurses are getting that helpful hand. Not only am I just putting information in, it's now giving me information back as that assistant that says, hey, you just said this. I've now gone and researched to qualified places. And this is something you might wanna bring back or even better, how many times were you in a situation probably as a nurse where you're like, wow, I know whether it was a hospital or a physician or wherever you were a nurse, like I know we have some really good documentation on this particular disease state or pre-diabetes, whatever the case was, but it would take me even longer to go find that pamphlet and blah, 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 as opposed to maybe an AI system saying, hey, Rebecca, here it is. You can give this immediately while you're still having that, inner, that care with the patient. I would just love to hear you talk more about how maybe AI can enhance the nurse patient relationship as opposed yeah. to pull away and eliminate. 
Well, so I mean, I think you just gave one of them, right? I mean, if AI is very effective, I mean, we've all heard of Dragon. It worked very well for physicians to actually do duplication right into those ones. And the truth is, is AI can become very effective at actually diagnosing and trending and information and processing and giving alerts. And we're seeing a lot of that. Those have already actually been built in EHRs. And the truth is, is we know based on algorithms that they actually do a better job in many instances than the human. But the actual person that has to make that decision should come down to the human. So from those kind of things, managing multiple complex patients at any given time where something else is monitoring or actually alerting to potential problems that you may be too busy to note at that moment at the bedside could be a substantial benefit to the nurses at the bedside. Let's also look at what's been happening to the changes of the workforce in nursing, which is that for the first time ever, the average length of experience of a nurse on a 12-hour shift has dropped from six years of experience at prior to the pandemic to 2.7 years of experience, the lowest amount of experience nurses have ever had at the bedside. So we have a lot of novice nurses at the bedside who don't know what they don't know. And the truth is, can AI step in and be that kind of gap so that they are catching those things that might not have been seen? So I think there's a lot of potential with AI to actually support the workforce, drive the workforce. I have to tell you, I would say once or twice a week, I have phone calls from companies saying, hey, Rebecca, I have this AI co-pilot um, to launch. And the reality is, is I, I look at it in adoption and I think to myself, you're really going to have to get down to a system that is going to be doing something that is already better than what some of these systems are doing and solving a more unique problem um, that is going to create less work for the nursing workforce. And I, I think you right. can name some great ones there, Brian, too. Yeah, and I mean, I think, you know, there's that that uh, change of pattern, too. Obviously, nurses are used to doing it, trained a certain way, or, or maybe they're lucky enough to have a great mentor when they do get on their first shifts. We know that's not always the case, not necessarily picking on anybody who's been a senior nurse. Either they're not there, to your point, because they've they've transitioned out of bedside uh, or nursing altogether due to a variety of reasons that we can get into like burnout and other things. Um, but also simply that it's just a, it's a change of habit. And we see this across all industries, certainly not just healthcare, where we, I was just talking to my, my CEO about this, uh, Jake, um, earlier today. And he's like, we were talking about sales, but it applies. And he said, you know, we're asking people to fundamentally change how they think about search how they think about information retrieval, because we've grown up in the era of Google search. And we think very much when it comes to that in the term of keywords, whether we call it that or not, we know how to distill what it is we're looking for into a simple Google search. And the reality is that's not how these language models were trained. They're much more natural. And it's weird that we almost have to unpack and unwind our own human intuition to go back to a natural state of normal conversation, because that's where these AI tools really do shine. It's yes. not in keywords, it's in conversation, it's in natural language. And I think there's a bit of change there, but you're right. It's asking a lot of somebody who's already insanely busy. And maybe that's something we can talk about, because I know that's something you're passionate about is, you know, you just talked about the average tenure now is like 2.7 years. Yeah. And this is something I know we've talked about, it's not that there's not registered nurses. It's that the water is going to the boat faster than we can bail it out. Mm -hmm. it, but, there's, but there is volume. We have nurses. It's that they're choosing no longer to be in the profession that they loved at one point because of a variety of factors. So although this is not directly correlated to AI, it is. So you could talk a little bit about that and what you're seeing when you talk to nurses. Oh, goodness. I mean, as you've heard in the last period of time since the pandemic is everything is about burnout, right? And I think what you actually have to look back is as burnout existed long before COVID, we knew that there was going to be a nursing shortage. And the truth is, is if you look back, nurses were the brunt of every single medical device technology that was issued into healthcare in the course of the last decade, right? They yeah. were the end users. And a girlfriend of mine and I were at a conference, actually Vive, um, a conference a year ago, and on stage, uh, she pulled out a piece of paper and she's like, look, it, it was an eight by 12 piece of paper it was checks of what nurses used to have to do on admissions. Right. And she goes, that was five years ago. And she goes now. And she unrolled a page six feet long and said, this is everything nurses have to do in the course of charting for their patient. And the truth is, is that what we did is we never took away what nurses were responsible for. We just made them responsible for more technology, more check boxes, more things that they should be monitoring for without looking at it. And nurses are saying, I I can't do anymore, right? The truth is, is uh, you can't just deploy technology and not take away old practices to drive that forward. And also one thing though, that is still 
up for debate, and this debate has been around a long time, and, and Brian, you know it, is the difference of using AI when you're writing, uh, you know, an email or using AI when you're writing, uh, you know, a LinkedIn social media post or whatever you're using AI for, uh, the difference of using AI when you're a nurse to chart is the question of what is, if, if you make a mistake or the AI makes a mistake in what they're charting, who ultimately is responsible to get up on sure. the stand? Are we going to fail the AI system? No, the truth is it's still going to be the ultimate responsibility. Yep. So my one concern with AI, and this is what we've seen is, hey, AI is supposed to drive efficiency, but efficiency is driven by, uh, you know, if efficiency is driven by people not being able to accurately document when it needed, and they're just using repeat terms, repeat assessments, um, mm -hmm. and they pull out 12 charts and everything looks identical um, from language terminology, we have a problem with mm -hmm. what's happening for care. And if there's something yeah. going wrong, who's who's held responsible for that? So I think that there is some level still of human interaction with AI and documentation around nursing that has not been completely isolated uh, and, and, and concerning for, I think, the healthcare profession in general. Well, so it sounds to me like when you were first talking about the when technology came into nursing is that it was to the benefit of something other than nurses, right? Mm -hmm. But if nurses are your front line and what you're interested in is um, is standardized data and yes. like efficiency and speeding that up, the current level of technology and AI is designed for that, right? Nurses exactly. speak natural language to something that then is responsible for identifying where those pieces go and bring it back to the nurse, right? Like, so like the, you said yes to this thing and therefore we don't have to do 50 of the items that was on the six feet sheet, right? right. The AI Fancy. and technology can do that. Like, uh, it just strikes me that that uh, it could be wonderful for patient care if we made nurses' lives easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If only that were things. And you got it. That's exactly it, Beth. So I think those are the kind of things that we have to explore more closely. So that kind of brings us into the idea of AI literacy, which is something I'm, I'm super passionate about. Um, uh, you uh, started a couple, well, started one of the people, um, Commission for Nurse Reimbursement, uh, mm -hmm. which, by the way, if you're listening to this and you're a nurse or, or even if you're just in healthcare, I highly recommend you go in to check that out. Um, mm -hmm. I became involved in it because I, I, I thought it was uh, something I wanted to be involved in, something, I, a change that I wanted to see. And um, one of the things that you know I know I'm passionate about in there is just doing what I can to help um, educate nurses in, in, in areas where maybe they don't have necessarily time to devote to it. And obviously for me, that gets into like AI literacy. So right. when we talk about AI literacy, you know, really what it's coming down to a lot of times is number one, as you just uh, pointed out and Beth, you were pointing out as well, it's like, Number one, you have to understand what the tool can and cannot do. And, and this tool is could be plural, right? There could be many, many AI tools. But let's just take like LLMs, language models, and um, natural language processing, NLP, and, and what they currently can do and can't do. Also, there's knowledge that needs to be had about the, the fear mongering that's out there. We just saw a huge, you know, recent news report that was about um, open AI and it was about uh, the New York Times and it got a lot of press. And, and if you were just to read the highlights of it, the gist of it was, wow, no, uh, open AI, they were able to get ChatGPT to give them a word for word version of some, some blog or article that was behind, you know, lock and key. That's crazy. That should not be able to happen. Everybody goes, yeah, that definitely, that scares me. Right. And then you come to find out that there was a lot of ifs and a lot of asterisks that came along with that. As in, they gave it the link to the blog. They gave it the first three paragraphs of the blog. They did a whole lot of other things for, for these articles that weren't even behind lock and key. And then said, right. Hey, it gave us exactly it. And as Beth would say, well, its whole job is to guess what the next word is. It kind of did its job. It did exactly what it was supposed to train, train to do. So anyway, I bring all that up to say there's a lot going on out there. God knows there's, there's, there's volume and noise for days when it comes to AI. And one of the things we try to do on a daily basis is just wade through it to the best of our ability. Um, it's important though to me, and I know it's important to you that as we look at the next three, five, seven years of nurses, our nurses who maybe 
are in high school right now, our future nurses that are in high school right now and and perhaps going to move into this, they're going to come into a world where AI is definitely part of their day-to-day job. And I think in a lot of ways, that's going to be a good thing, not a bad thing, not like taking, I think it's going to bring them back to the patient. And hopefully we can stretch this 2.7 years back out to three, five, seven, nine, where nurses are happily staying in their position. Yeah. All that to say, what's your, what, give me your, your opinion, your, your take on literacy, did, uh, uh, AI literacy as it applies to nurses. I'd love to hear your take on that. So I think that the reality is, is that the, the, the one thing that I, I, a lot of investors are calling and asking me is like, hey, if we do an AI co-pilot, the truth is, is we're not going to need nurses, right? We can set in a high school graduate who has a CNA degree and they can do the mm. jobs of the nurse because they can follow the directions, right? The, the design of this is going to make that work in such a way that is beneficial um, to reduce the burden of having to produce more nurses. So there is a fear there that that is part of that kind of thing. So are you going to de-skill a workforce that historically has been highly skilled a jack of all trades because you're not going to need that. And I, I think that's not just unique to nursing. I think that there's a lot of concern about that across the, across the, the nation. So I, I think that we still have some societal issues of what's going on. But I think for your point, then I let's be honest. We we all have kids, right? My kids blow me away by how much they use technology and what they can do. That takes them like three seconds, takes me twenty minutes. So I'm like I bang my head against the wall. So we know that that next generation is going to be leap years ahead in creating solutions and workarounds. Because one thing that nurses have always done is workarounds and massive amounts of numbers that we're going to see them using. So AI has a tremendous amount of potential. The debates that are going on around it are not that it if it is going to happen. The question is of how it is going to happen. Right. And the truth is is that i mean it's even in the that we had our first nurse appointed to the high tech commission um uh, she's one of our commissioners rochelle and the truth is is like the debates are happening. So how do we do it ethically? How do we do it in a way that doesn't burden, but more importantly, enhances those experiences? And I have to tell you, I have never seen in such short amount of time, one singular topic drive so much innovation in a singular space, right? Like yeah. this is unheard of. Usually you're solving for a number of problems, but every AI can solve for a variety of problems across nursing that that has never been able to solve in all of healthcare. So this is tremendously promising. And I don't think nurses are scared of it, in all honesty. I think the reality is, and literacy-wise, I think half of us look at it and say, oh my gosh, I sound so much better when I enter my stuff in there because I don't. I was never taught the correct English ways of saying things sure. or documenting. So I think, I, I think that Brian and Beth, you guys are at the forefront of AI. And every day that I watch and listen to what you guys are studying and trending on, there is going to someday become like a moderation of normal again in AI. Mm. And right now we're just not there. We're on that steep curve of everybody's sure. adapting and learning. But at some point, all innovation sort of plateaus. Like it's been historically at um, from a perspective. I could be wrong in this, but I think there's going to become a normalization of AI across industry. Um, it's just not there yet. And until it is, it's going to feel like we're in the Wild West, which is both good, but also bad because of the lack of structure and the way in which it engages. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there's going to be, you know, the amount of nurses who come up with innovative uh, solutions through like what you're doing that have AI as part of it are going to be fantastic. And I can't wait for that next great idea to see it. At, at the same time, um, what I agree with, and Beth, we've talked about it on the show, um, but even Sam Altman has talked about it as well as other people, which is that, you know, they talk about our, um, artificial general intelligence, the point mm -hmm. at which maybe there's an AGI, there's a there's a AI that is smarter than humans on all fronts or whatever. And they said, you know, honestly, it's it, people are waiting for this one distinct moment where the iceberg breaks off from the land, you know, the mass or whatever. And, and everybody goes, oh, that's it. Everybody can point to it. And the reality is that's, that's probably not the way it's going to happen. It's going to be slow and it's going to be the way it probably always has been before is that these technologies just sort of find their way into our everyday life and we accept them and we go, oh, that's, that's new and that's the way it is. And I, I definitely believe that when it comes to you know, healthcare and nursing. I mean, the amount of innovation in healthcare over the next five years is going to be astronomical. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. At the same time, I think there's going to be a lot of nurses who are using new technologies who probably would never assign the words AI to <laughs> yeah. it. No, it they won't even know. Like spell check. It'll just be like things grammarly, right? It, it'll just be, it'll be this this little extra box on this on this software that they're already using. And then one day they're going to come in, there's going to be an update and they're going to go, oh, that's kind of cool. It does this thing for me now. 
that's nice. That, that saves me about five minutes <laughs> per patient. That's fantastic. And it'll be these little, little mm. things. And then we're going to look back, you know, in five years. And I think we're going to go, oh my God, like so much of what I do is now directly, you know, uh, entangled with an AI process, but, but I know it was so slow and so natural that, yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily, uh, pay attention, so to speak. It just, and I think that's also also the caution though, right? Is let's say that what used to take you a half an hour, suddenly they are like, okay, it's going to drive such efficiency. You can do it in 10 minutes. Does it mean that you're seeing, you know, 50 times the volume? And so are you burning yourself out by those kind of things as well? So I think it's going to be yeah. an interesting pace of which we look to evolve this kind of space. And I think the reality is, is that we it's still wait and see, right? It's still to be determined what the outcomes of all of this is, are going to be, because we know one thing that happens, right? We've seen great technology in the past that have come out, but they've died on the vine because nobody used them. The right. difference with AI is the rapid adoption by which it's being used and the amount of which it's already solving for in a very short period of time. That is what is fascinating about this. So we know that it's happening. Um, and the truth is the destination is still to be determined on where we fall in it. So I, I love this conversation. And the truth is, thank you for having a nurse come on to talk to you guys about AI, because the reality is that I, I don't think a lot of us in nursing on the front lines are necessarily talking about it, um, right. but it's definitely in the periphery of all of the committees on ethics and, uh, you know, technology and innovation. Uh, and the truth is, is we need to start having these conversations and educating the nursing workforce around it because it is going to impact not only the way we practice, but the way we're educated and perhaps incredibly even the degree in which we graduate from and changing the entire profession from. Is it a degreed profession anymore or can AI co-pilots actually replace the nurse's needs for high levels of degrees? So lots to be determined. Yeah, I agree with you. And I would say... Um, we this does need to be talked about because what i want to make sure of i know you want to make sure of is that nurses have the knowledge they need so that decisions and policies aren't once again being made for them and right. without their their input and consent and we've talked a lot you've been a huge huge proponent advocate of having a nurse at the table, being in the room when conversations and decisions are being made that directly affect what's going on with nurses. And for too long, it, it, that has not been the case. Nurses haven't been in the conversations with things that are directly affecting their day in and out. And so I think this is, you know, another opportunity to have these conversations to maybe say, Hey, look, it's not the right time for this, but in six months, we should probably talk about this again, because that's how fast it's moving. So when we talk about things like hallucinations, you go, that's not a great fit today. It's not shelf it for two years and we'll circle back. A lot of times in AI, it's shelf it for three to six months and you better be bringing it back up again, because there's a good chance it has evolved to the point where it's now maybe a possibility. And so even just reworking and understanding how these things are brought up in a, you know, a healthcare corporate environment, it needs to be circulated all the time and we need as many voices as we have. Okay. So we have just a couple of minutes left here, Rebecca. And what I want to do is just sort of, you know, roll out the red carpet to you and just make sure that we have a few minutes here to talk about what you're currently working on. You're, <laughs> and that's that's a loaded question because you're always working on, one thing I know about you is you're always working on 10 things at once. You also, by the way, and I want to make sure I say this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag on you a little bit. You are quite possibly the kindest, nicest person I have ever met that is so willing to give of your time to other people. I don't know anybody that I've ever met that's faster to say, how can I help you? How can I help you get to where you need to be and stuff like that? So I wanted to put that out there, but as you see it, like, I want to roll out the red carpet to you. What are you working on right now? What would you love anybody that's listening to this show? If, they're, if they have nothing to do with healthcare, what are you working on um, so they can go and support you and everything you have going? Uh, Brian, thank you so much. No, so I think that the two big focuses and loves of my life, I wish I, I had, I joke with people that I have no other hobbies. So I, all, all I do is nursing. I live, breathe, and think it. And I left corporate America behind um, just recently, a big executive job, which was, you know, an incredibly exciting place to be to do two things. One, uh, to launch the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement. I, what we did not talk about is the challenges to the nursing workforce tie back to the lack of a reimbursement model for nursing. Nursing is the only healthcare professional that is a cost to healthcare systems. We're rolled into room rates. So there is no investment made into it. So all these companies call me and they're like, hey, we're going to solve the nursing workforce. And I was like, but there's no way to pay for it. This is just a right. problem that we have. And the truth is, is that means that we continue to staff nursing 
nurses to the lowest cost denominator, we keep burning them out. And the only solution that I can see is we need a new financial model around nursing. So thank you for sharing that. The Commission for Nurse Reimbursement, please tune in because honestly, the history ties directly to the history of the women's rights movement. So if we could have a greater conversation in the future, we'd love to talk more about that. And the next mm -hmm. is, I just recently decided it was time to step back and see if one point in my life, if which I've always been swayed not to, is to build a company that I could do 100% full-time. I've started companies, nonprofits, everything while working full-time jobs. And I've given myself this year to really focus on how to elevate the voice of the nurse with uh, nurseapproved.health. Uh, and that's a platform that basically says to all of these conversations we've been having, there's all this development around healthcare. But rarely do we engage the nurse in the development or the feedback that you need from the frontline end user. We've been left out of that. So it took us four years. We founded the company in 2018, but actually the most exciting thing happened and why I decided to make the jump was at the end of 2022, Nurse Approved received the first certification mark for the United States Patent and Trade Office to actually allow for nurse approval of tested and trusted devices in the marketplace. So for the next year, what I'm just trying to do is to sit there and say, if you're a company out there in healthcare, if you're a company out there selling to consumers and you want to earn the trust of nurses, engage them when actually looking at your product. And let's see if we can change the landscape and develop better products because nurses are the most trusted profession in the United States for over 20 years running at this point in time. And it's time that we take trust back and we should be having nurses in those conversations. So that's what we're trying to do, change the future of nursing and uh, amplify and elevate the entire profession. Because to me, no matter how much tech we have, I wonder where will healthcare be if there is no nurses? And the truth is, I see no solution at this point in time. So we must save nursing. So thank you guys for having me with that sort of my soapbox. No, that's not a soapbox. It's, it's we, as a, as a society, we're very, very lucky to have someone like you and so many others, by the way, you know, that, that I've gotten to meet either through you or, or through, you know, mutual connections and stuff like that, who are just as passionate as you are. Um, the, the commission, the people that are in the commission, super passionate, want to make a change, want to see a change for a law that's over a hundred years old that shouldn't have been there in the first place. But as I always say, people who look like me, uh, got nervous <laughs> when nurses were gaining too much, too much uh, ground and too much stature, and um, you know, change those laws. So we have to right a wrong, um, even if it's a hundred years later. We need to right this wrong and and make sure that uh, nurses are um, taken care of correctly when it comes to um, room rates and things like that. So definitely check out the commercial uh, commission for nurse reimbursement, uh, Rebecca. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, thank you for coming on and, and doing this. And we'll definitely have you back because as, as we were just saying, this stuff changes that what all our all our guests were like, oh, we got to have you back. We got to have you back because we know that there's going to be major you know, developments in 2024 and there's just going to be a lot more to talk about. So. Six months from now, I can't wait to see where AI is in nursing. So Beth, Brian, thank you guys for having me and good luck to everything you guys keep doing. I could look forward to following you and keeping a pulse on everything AI. Thank you well. so much. We appreciate it. All right. Until then, we'll see you, Rebecca.